In this video, we'll look at the hybridization for the carbon here in CH4. This is methane. So we have a Lewis structure here, and if you need help drawing the Lewis structure for methane for CH4, there's a link in the description of this video. So the easy way to do this, we could look at this table here, and we're looking for the number of groups, or the steric number, on that central carbon. Hydrogen doesn't hybridize, so we're not worried about that. So we have one, two, three, four hydrogens bonded to that central carbon. That means our steric number, that's four. We're going to have sp3 hybridization and the ideal bond angle, 109.5 degrees. That's this one here. So that's the quick way to figure out the hybridization. Let's talk about why we have sp3 hybridization for CH4. So carbon on the periodic table is atomic number six. It has six protons, six electrons. So we're going to spread these out in this electron configuration diagram. 1, 2, the 1s, that's full. 3, 4, the 2s is full. Then we go to the 2p, we spread them out, 1, 2. So we've used all six electrons here for carbon. We're really only interested in the highest energy level, the valence electrons. So that would be this 2s and the 2p. These are our valence electrons. We have four. And here's the problem. When we look at this, these electrons here, they're by themselves, so they're available to form chemical bonds. So each one of these could bond with a hydrogen. These in a pair here, they're not going to be able to bond. So this does not explain how this methane can have four hydrogens. And in the lab, if you analyze methane, CH4, you'll see that it has four hydrogens. So we need something to explain this, and that's hybridization. Since we have this space here, we can promote this electron up here. Now we can mix the 2s and the 2p, and that's going to give us hybrid orbitals. So we're going to mix this s orbital here and these 3p orbitals there, and that'll give us four orbitals that are all equal. We call these degenerate hybrid orbitals. So these all have an equal energy, and it's kind of in between the 2s and the 2p. So we've taken these two here, we've hybridized them to form these hybrid orbitals. We still have this 1s down here, but we ignore that. Those aren't valence electrons. They are not involved in bonding, so we're not so interested in them. So now we can spread these four out. One, two, three, four. And because each one is by itself here, it can form a bond with hydrogen. That's why we can have these four hydrogens here on methane, because we've hybridized the 2s and the 2p. Let's look at how those orbitals would overlap. So each one of these, that would represent an electron available for bonding, and we have four of them, those four sp3 hybridized orbitals for CH4. Now, the hydrogen atoms, we have four hydrogen atoms, they can bond here. So a hydrogen can come with its one valence electron, and it forms the bond, and that'll happen on each one of these. So now, we have the correct number of hydrogens, four hydrogens bonded to our central carbon in these sp3 hybridized orbitals, and we have the correct molecular geometry. We have tetrahedral molecular geometry, and we have these bond angles here of 109.5 degrees. Let's look at a model that we can rotate. So here's our tetrahedral molecular geometry for methane. We have our bond angles of 109.5 degrees, and we're able to have these four hydrogens with this molecular geometry and bond angles because of the hybridization. And this is exactly what we see when we study methane in the lab. Let's go back to our orbital overlap diagram. So to recap, we have hybridization of sp3 for the methane molecule, CH4. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.